Far in the east, high in the hills of northern China, lies a place whose chambers once held some of the most revealing faces of early humanity, the upper cave at Zhou Kudian. Here, among broken stone and ancient dust, three early modern humans were uncovered in the 1930s. Among them, Upper Cave Skull 102 stands as a very important specimen. Her skull reveals a broad vault, projecting face and strong features that call to mind a distant place. Many researchers noted that her form resembled the Australo-Melanesian peoples, yet her skull also bears a striking resemblance to an ancient man from Oase Cave in Romania. This unexpected likeness suggested that her ancestry belonged not solely to East Asia, but to a much deeper and wider stream of humanity. In Eastern Europe, beneath the foothills of the Carpathian Mountains, in a limestone cave whose name means Cave of Bones, a skull and fragments of a mandible were recovered. These remains belong to a man who lived more than 40,000 years ago. He is known today as Oase II. His bones carry a portrait of life at a moment when modern humans had only recently entered Europe, but he was more closely related to ancient East Eurasians. Oase II has strong genetic ties to Asia. When his genetic signatures were studied, they showed an unexpected closeness to the earliest modern human from near Upper Cave a man known as Tianyuan Man. His remains revealed that he was related to ancestors of East Asians, Native Americans, and also to the peoples of Australia and Melanesia. The striking physical resemblance between the Upper Cave Skull 102 and Oasi II Skull, despite the enormous distance between their caves, suggested that they belonged to the same early population that spread across Eurasia before subsequent groups divided into regionally distinct peoples. Tianyuan Man, who lived near Upper Cave, carried with him another clue to this ancient story. His Y-DNA lineage belonged to an early branch within Haplogroup R. This lineage is strongly represented today in Melanesian populations and is known to have been carried by ancient groups who followed a southern route through Southeast Asia on their way to Sahul, the Ice Age continent that once joined Australia and New Guinea. Oasis Y-DNA belongs to Haplogroup N, also associated with Australia, suggesting an interconnected ice age. Although the paternal lineage of Oasis II has not been completely resolved, his deep genetic closeness to Tianyuan Man suggests that Oasis II and Tianyuan Man both descended from an early Eurasian population that contributed directly to the people who would also settle Australia and Melanesia. Their shared paternal ancestry supports the view that the first wave of modern humans into Eurasia spread broadly in multiple directions, moving west into Europe and east into China, and that some portion of this population continued south into Australia and Melanesia. The connection between these three populations, separated across an entire continent, becomes even clearer when we examine a distinctive physical trait preserved in their bones. Both Oase II and Tianyuan Man display an unusual chin shape that resembles an inverted letter T. This shape is not commonly found in later humans, yet it appears in both a Romanian skull and a Chinese skull from 40,000 years ago. The shared presence of this unusual feature speaks to a common ancestry, a window into a time before regional differences emerged. Oase II's deep ancestral ties to Tianyuan Man and his unusual physical traits reveal the same message. Eurasia was once filled with a single human population. That early population spread to the southern islands and left its clearest modern legacy among the Australo-Melanesian peoples. Their genes, their skull forms, and their long presence in the same lands testify to a continuity that began far away, somewhere in the heart of the ancient world. The resemblance between Upper Cave Skull 102 and these early individuals becomes easier to understand in this light. Her skull, defined by broad proportions and features often associated with Australo-Melanesian peoples, seems to reflect the same ancient lineage found in Tianyuan Man and seen again in the Oasi fossils. If she stood alongside them in life, one might see clearly that they belong to the same great branch of humanity. Her skull carries a memory of a time when humanity had not yet diverged, when physical differences had not yet hardened into regional identities. Because the original upper cave fossils were lost during World War II, 
have scholars turned to casts, measurements, and comparisons. Over the decades, these tools revealed a striking truth. The upper cave skulls resemble the earliest modern humans in Europe far more than they resemble later Chinese populations. At the same time, they share features associated with Australians, Melanesians, and other early Asian settlers. Some researchers pointed out that the dental pattern of the upper cave individuals seemed to show East Asian connections, while others argued that the earlier interpretations of these dental traits were uncertain. Yet the cranial form remained unmistakable. It belonged to the earliest modern humans whose roots ran deep. The archaeological and genetic discoveries of recent decades continue to strengthen these links. During the earliest phase of modern human expansion into Eurasia, a remarkable unity characterized the human world. Groups traveled along shared corridors that crossed the heart of the continent. The first modern humans to enter Europe, East Asia, and Australia were connected by shared ancestry and shared physical features. Their faces differed from the people who would later inhabit these regions. They belonged to a single dispersal stream whose children later diverged through time and distance. The path taken by these people is easier to imagine if we recall that the world was different. Sea levels were lower, linking islands into land masses. Vast plains extended from Europe and Siberia into northern China. Rivers opened routes across Central Asia. The southern waterways of Southeast Asia formed natural passages toward Australia and New Guinea. People could sail along these pathways, carrying their traditions with them. When the ancestors of Chanyuan Man and Oase II reached their respective homelands, they were still members of the same broad population. They had not yet diverged into separate peoples. Their fate, however, was different. The lineage that reached Europe gradually faded as new groups moved west. The descendants of Oase II did not contribute significantly to later Europeans. The lineage that reached East Asia appears to have contributed to later East Asians, yet it also preserved its connection to the southern peoples of Australia and Melanesia. The Upper Cave 102 woman thus serves as a key witness to this ancient unity. Her resemblance to Melanesians and early Australians shows that the human story does not move cleanly from one region to another. Instead, it begins with a single ancestral stream that branched across the continents. Her skull links China to Europe and to the islands of the Pacific. Her face, preserved in skull reconstructions, remembers the early world better than we do. Her contemporaries known as Upper Cave Skulls 101 and 103 only widened the mystery. Skull 101 strongly recalled the Cro-Magnon Man of France, one of the earliest recognized Europeans. Skull 103 evoked the appearance of ancient Arctic peoples. Together they represented a remarkable range of physical variation, a reminder that the first modern humans to enter East Asia had not yet diverged into the familiar regional form seen today. They were living evidence of a population that still carried the ancestral skull shape of all modern humans, a face shared from Europe to Australia. The unusual shape of Skull 102 led some to believe that her head may have been altered during childhood, but whether or not this occurred, her broad cheeks, forward-projecting jaw and rounded vault still aligned most strongly with people found not merely across China, but across the Pacific. When her surviving casts were examined decades later, her resemblance to the earliest Australians, Polynesians, and ancient American peoples proved difficult to deny. She possessed features that joined her to a population whose journey began long before the modern age, when groups of modern humans spread across Eurasia in a single broad wave. Her cave companion, Skull 101, strengthened this picture. He shared robust proportions, a long cranial vault, and a brow line echoing some of the earliest Europeans. His resemblance to the Cro-Magnon skull from France, along with another ancient skull from southern China, known as the Lujiang specimen, suggested that he belonged to an early and widespread population that moved from Western Asia into both Europe and East Asia. His skull held a form that had not yet been reshaped by regional climate or isolation. In the faces of upper cave skulls, 101 and 102 then, appeared the outlines of a continental population. Upper Cave Skull 101 further confirms this picture. 
His resemblance to Cro-Magnon I, one of the oldest Europeans, shows that early populations remained similar across Eurasia before time and separation drew them apart. When modern humans first migrated throughout Eurasia, they did not immediately divide into regionally distinct peoples. For thousands of years they shared a single cranial form and a single genetic heritage. Only later, when oceans rose, when glaciers advanced, and when populations became isolated from each other, did their faces begin to take on the shape of new lands. Thus, the three upper cave individuals, together with Tianyuan Man and Oase Man, illuminate the early human world. They remind us that modern humans began as a single population. They spread widely, moved freely, and left descendants in many regions. Their shared features persisted across thousands of miles. Their genetic legacy survived most clearly in the peoples of Australia and Melanesia, whose ancestors reached a new continent before any other modern humans on Earth. The world eventually changed. Climate transformed the landscape. Ice sheets closed corridors. Rising seas drowned islands and valleys. Populations became isolated. New cultures formed. In some places, Neanderthals lingered and mingled with newcomers. In others, new populations arrived and replaced earlier settlers. Yet scattered across Eurasia remain the bones that recall the early unity of humanity. In the limestone chambers of Romania and China, in the Pacific islands of New Guinea, and in the ancient riverbeds of Australia, the echoes of that unity still ring. The woman represented by Upper Cave Skull 102 might never have seen the Southern Sea. Yet she stands at the turning point, a daughter of the first great human wave. The man of Oasi, likewise, rests at another branch of the same tree. Their skulls bear testimony to the deep history that preceded all later differences. Please click on these links to explore more of our videos and thank you for watching.